Well, good morning everyone. We're at this place again. If you've watched our films, you might remember it's because... What's happening today, Nikki? We are going to Croatia. Croatia? What? But this is Bridge End in South Wales. I know, I know. What? Croatia? Who said that? It's hard to think, isn't it, that actually we're now in Wales and in a few days, well, so in about a week's time, we'll be in Croatia. Yes. It is, it's that time folks, that time and we are up loaded on the road heading for Black Horse Farm um, which is down uh, just now near the Channel Tunnel. So, and of course we're waiting for Carol and Stephen to collect their <laughs> van because their van is due to arrive here soon, it's uh, from Campervan Getaways again and uh, they've just got a little bit of stuff to pack. Much, no, no. What on earth in there? I can't see any beer there. What's going on? Here's another van from Camper Van Getaways. Uh, but while we're away, you'll see and we'll show you around the van that Carol and Stephen have rented here. But um, it's the same company that we used in June. Paul, who looks after the company, looked after us very well when Nikki's sister hired uh, Van Lass and uh, we had great service from that and I can hear an engine so this is yes there it is <laughs> and here is young Paul with Carolyn Stevens van look at that isn't that looking nice and clean clean and valeted, ready to be loaded with all that stuff. So to say Karen and Stephen are super excited would be an understatement. Time to pack. Well, the engine started, it's packed, it's packed and ready to go and Oi oi! <laughs> They're ready. Let's go. So we're off, and um, because uh, Bob and I um, suffer with temperature control gate wars, um, I've got the uh, little blanket in the front of you. Got the blanket. I know. Lovely. Which Carol made me, and of course Carol and Stephen have followed the line on our journey to Croatia. They are. But Carol made this, isn't it fantastic? And it's just lovely. It gives me lovely and warm. But hopefully I won't be needing it when we get further down south to Europe. Um, and the other thing that we brought with us this time on our travels is a walkie-talkie. So I can talk to Carol and Stephen without using any data on the uh, mobile phone. Um, yeah, so should we give it a go? I'd have done it, I'd have done it. To Christmas Carol, Christmas Carol, over. Christmas Carol, I'd have done it, over. Christmas Carol, you're live on air, just testing out the walkie talkies. How's your journey going today? I'd have done it, I'd have done it, absolutely. Journey from uh, West Wales to Folkestone, 
and um, we're just arriving now, in a moment, at the early campsite, uh, just before our um, trip tomorrow morning through Europe Tunnel. Black Horse Farm, we like Black Horse Farm. Yeah, we stayed here. It always means holidays. It does. Yeah, we stayed here a few months ago before we went over to France, and uh, yeah, it's great because it's very easy, right next to the shower blocks, and they put you, you're going onto the Euro Tunnel early in the morning, they put you close to the, um, the exit, so it's an easy getaway. Uh, so we've got to be up what time in the morning? Uh, we've got to be at the tunnel between 5.50 and 6.50, uh, 6.50 latest. Yeah, so that's quite early. So an early start. Yeah, yeah. On the, uh, on the right there, you've got a little news agents and a sell everything shop. So uh, that's quite handy because that is our right opposite the campsite, which is here. CMC Black Horse Farm. Yoo-hoo! Good to be back. Look. Well, it's good to be back at Black Horse Farm. Quiet at the moment, probably a few coming in, I suspect, in the next few hours. Last time we were here in June, this was absolutely full. Every pitch. And here is the fabulous little camper van, getaways van. Stephen? You managed to get yourself hooked up, fantastic. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Their first time hooking up their van. Spot on, and it's all working. How good is that? So, there's the little reception area there. And then, um, just through the barriers there and immediately on the right, literally around the back of this building, that's where the ferry pitches are. So a uh, quick getaway in the morning. For us, it's about uh, 10 to 6 or earlier, half five. Bring it on. Albeit, I shan't be too disappointed to be leaving the UK if it's going to be like this over the next few days. But anyway, let's see where young Nicky is. Probably taken up residence already, I expect. Oh yes, she has indeed, yes. Looking very comfortable there, my lovelies. Yes, it is, very comfy. It is, isn't it? Gosh. Oh. Despite the weather. Oh yeah. Oh, got the TV on as well, have you? Kettle's yeah. done, oh my word. Oh, it's tea and... <gasps> Look what Carol's made us. Oh, is that cake? Stack load of cake. Tea and cake. <gasps> it's gotta be done. And then I've made a chicken curry. A chicken curry, oh lush. Even better. Right, well in that case we better get some cake down our Gregory Pecks. And look at that. Carol's coffee cake, absolutely fantastic Carol. Loving Cheers, that. Day one, day one. <laughs> yeah, we're not even out of the UK yet and we've got cake. Fantastic. First night, what are we doing? Yeah, you've guessed it. Bake Off's on. The chockies are out, Carol and Stephen have eaten them all, and Nikki and I have had none, have we? No, none. Had Not a single one. All yeah, look at them all. There. All over there. All yes. over there. Yeah. Outrageous. We haven't had a single one, have we? Perhaps we will tomorrow, eh? Well, it's day two. Look at the state of this. It's dark. I haven't seen dark for a long time. This is outrageous. But. It's not outrageous because we're going through the Channel Tunnel and even the lovely Nikki. I'm up. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know how I managed it, but I am up. <laughs> oh my God, what is it? It is 5.20. Um, That's, have we ever seen that time of day for a I long time? I'm so pleased the shower block. Yes, yeah, it's literally there. That's um, the shower block. So I just two steps. Over there, yeah. Back. Yeah, and, uh, that made life a lot easier. it does. It definitely wakes you up a bit. Yeah, we're only just over there, so that is dead handy. We're on the ferry pitch, of course, at Black Horse Farm, which is the quick getaway job. But, um, but my word, it's manky out there. And so therefore, we're hoping for some very nice stuff down south. So 
we're just approaching the tunnel now, Euro Tunnel. And the main thing to have handy, um, if you haven't been across here before, is your booking reference number and of course your passports. Um, but your booking reference number is the first thing that you'll need to tap in. And um, we'll show you that anyway, um, as, we, uh, as we go through the uh, Euro Tunnel. So we're just coming up to the first booths where you uh, check in, so to speak, with your booking reference number. And uh, we're just going to pick a lane now and uh, start that little procedure. So a press to check in. Then you uh, just slot in your booking number. And once you've uh, got that booking number in, it waits a bit, checks your details. Don't carry any of that. Press if, press if correct. Confirm for no pets. Uh, you choose which type of fuel you are, so we're diesel. And we've got an option there to go on a slightly earlier one, so I've chosen that one for the minute. And there we go. Simple as that, folks. So we're through that first booth. Wasn't that an easy process? Bit of touch screen, and that's job. And then you follow it round into the, the first stop off here is like a big car look at that as well <gasps> Tess Carmichael British flag on the side there show jumper I think isn't she fantastic truck look at that but um, yeah so you can come through uh, we came through from over there it brings you down this road into this car park here where you can uh, then just stop off and wait the board up there tells you uh, down at the bottom there we are J3 so the thing that spat out of the booth there at that little stop, that was our J3 number. And then uh, on the board there, it obviously you just keep your eye on that. And as it says there, they're gonna call us in 11 minutes. And once they do, uh, so in other words, in there is all your retail units, toilets, you name it, takeaways, food. Um, obviously, if you've got any dairy on board, dairy and or um, all the other stuff that you can't take through the Euro Tunnel, then uh, now's your chance to dispose of it in many a bin that they leave out here for that reason. Um, or hide it, one or the other. No, probably dispose of it. Wouldn't want the uh, butter and milk police to get you. Um, and uh, then eventually when they call us, you follow the signs for France there, which um, just takes you back out that road along that lovely little tree-lined, bit Christmassy that, God. Dare I mention the C word? Terrible. It's only September. Um, back down that road and you just follow the signs through to customs, one or two other booths, and eventually you line up for the train, which we'll show you once we're on the move. So it's still very early. It's not even daylight. This is outrageous. So they've just called our number, J3, and so we're now following the signs for France. And look at these pretty trees that they've lit up. So we're through the uh, both passport controls, the British and the uh, French, and we're now entering the uh, large lane for large vehicles and uh, soon to be lined up ready for the uh, train. Sorted into lane 16, the last holding point before we uh, head out over that way, over to the platforms and then into the, uh, into the train. Carol and Stephen got through. How they got through customs, I'll never know. The contraband they've got in there. Outrageous. And we took, uh, as you saw there, we took that option of the uh, 720 instead of the 750. So uh, if you do get a travel free approach, which we certainly had this morning, as it's crazy o'clock, then, um, then you often are offered alternative crossings. 
for no uh, no extra charge of course so yeah half hour earlier to try and escape some of the cloud but having looked at the forecast I do believe it's following us um, into Belgium last stop for toilets as well over there on terra firma before we head away and then once we're green lighted just follow the leader and just wait for the final call we're heading all the way down there isn't it bizarre getting on a train to disappear under a shed load of water and come out somewhere in Europe the final bit look at that disgustingly grey day yes it is rather isn't it let's hope for some better weather as we go south well I hope so otherwise I want a refund yeah, yeah. you need well, a, refund. Want a refund yeah absolutely yeah. Gosh. It's a bit autumnal, folks, isn't it? A bit autumnal, to say the least. Yes. Second, second week in September, it's supposed to be summer still. And yet when we came from Tembe, it was about 22 degrees, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, showing, a, showing a balmy 16 now. It still feels weird, doesn't it, when you drive onto a train platform and you motor home. <laughs> yeah, it does. And the trains are... Expecting to run over the uh, commuters waiting for their 7.30 to London, aren't you? Yeah. Bizarre looking trains as and well, where's they? the cost of coffee and press a manger when you need it, eh? On the station platform or the champagne bar. Absolutely. I know, just terrible service, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, funny looking things, these trains, but what a great invention though. Well, let's say that when we get to the other side and we're still dry, that would be good then. It would. <laughs> Go, just about to. Uh, yeah, you can see through the windows are there. See all the. Yeah, all the other cars. See the cars on the double deck because some of them are obviously double decked to take two layers of cars. So does that mean when we're in the tunnel, we look out those windows and we can see the fish? Yes. Well, in fact, it'd be more <laughs> than fish. There might be some sharks and God knows what passing through, <laughs> and the odd Russian sub, I'd imagine. to head in. Line her up. Here we go. Little tip when you're coming through these um, carriages. As you can see, as we uh, each, each of these carriages has got a, a frame here. Um, and those frames have got doors within and they close uh, when you set off so a good idea is to um, not enter the next carriage if uh, you think you might not squeeze in behind the next vehicle because otherwise you'll end up reversing backwards to come out uh, back into the carriage behind you so we're just going to make sure as we approach the uh, vehicle in front that we've got enough room in that carriage. So we're entering into the next carriage now because we're confident that we can fit into this one. Well, and that weird feeling, isn't it? Travelling along, got notifications for my tracker alarm saying somebody's moving the van without the ignition key in because of course we're wobbling around in the tunnel but um, at least it works anyway the tracker and then somewhere unsurprisingly morning unsurprisingly takes any opportunity <laughs> any opportunity to have a quick 40 
40 winks catch up from an oh what was it five no it was even earlier it was about 5 a.m wasn't it so mm. yes yeah, it's great so look at that eh half a chance and she's zedding it again or trying to anyway without me pestering her with a camera 30 40 minutes and we're there and I do love this car Ted Andy that three USBs on it and one two three yeah three uh, three power sockets put an on off on off there uh, that's been a really handy acquisition just allows you because I've got weirdly right down there by the driver's seat there's a uh, three pin plug and then the next three pin plug is uh, is there so um, it just meant that uh, instead of having cables trailing over there it's got about a meter of flex on it which is, allows me to plug it in down by the driver's door permanently and it can sit there which is um, which has been absolutely brilliant for all your chargers and bits and bobs so uh, yeah definitely a good purchase that and just think just so you can see it uh, what was the make of it status I think yeah. and talking to trackers I um, just had a phone call notification from Trackstar who had uh, also picked up the fact that the van was actually rocking around without the engine being on um, and they it's the first time they've actually rung me on that I've had notifications before but uh, this time they rang me to say um, no need to call back but if obviously the van is stolen then uh, get in touch with us as soon as possible but it's moving without the ignition being on so good little system came with the van um, and uh, it's called Trackstar part of the fitting of the van and here we are out the other end we are en France we are indeed we were right near the front weren't we? we were yeah that's good oh it's just as rainy in France yeah it's followed us it's followed us I'm going for a refund if it doesn't improve. <laughs> we're in our third country. We've come from Wales to England to France and now we're in Belgium. Very exciting. And it's, it's away, yes. Yeah. And it's about a oh about an hour and a half to our campsite in Belgium yeah. for yeah. our uh, first night abroad. Yeah, it was a good time, wasn't it? It was um, getting up that crazy hour of the day. Um, we're, uh, we're only about one o'clock now, we've done our shopping, done the lot. So, uh, yeah, just a couple of hours, hopefully, into our campsite, which is Camping Dernal, it's called. Um, and we'll give you a look at that when we get there, as always. But pretty cheap, I seem to remember as well, but I'll let you know that uh, when we get there. Camping Dernal, or it's also called La Pommier Rustique. So uh, we're about uh, 0.4 of a mile away. Nice approach though, we're only just off the main road, if, um, so it's dead quick to get to. Very nice. Oh, look, there's tea. <laughs> Fire up the Kadak. No, we're having, we're going vegetarian tonight. We're having mushroom. Mushroom steak. S no, 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 mushroom stroganoff thing. Without steak? Yeah. But there are steaks there, look, they're grazing in the field. 200 metres. And what a manky day it's been, drive-wise. Oh, it has, hasn't it? Absolutely, rained most of the way. Not the most scenic of sunny days, that is for sure. Here we are, by the looks of it, Camping Dunel. Uh, oh, there's the reception look over there. Well, it stopped raining about 20 minutes ago. Not all roses, 
in Belgium today, as in roses of sunshine. Hopefully the road's not too busy tonight. And then a sort of site that stretches up on some terracing, lots of um, permanent fixtures here, but then these pitches just uh, on the left and right here, they're with the entrance that we came in at there, they're uh, sort of for the guest arrivals, I think, or for like us just staying for a, for a night. Got a sauna there, and this is a jacuzzi here, which you both of which you can book if you want to use them. The uh, little shower blocks are uh, there's a couple of showers in there, two or three toilets in each one, sort of porter cabin style things. A bit rustic, but uh, but they work. And. Uh, then yeah, one or two more pitches up there. But a nice, very quiet, very quiet here. And what have we got? Bit of information as well. Oh, it gives you an idea. We came in down the bottom here. So we're in these pitches on the side here. And then uh, you can see it's quite extensive on the back here. Yeah, a bit of everything. I think they cater for tents as well, but... And a sauna. What a quaint little hut. Rosie the Moho, hanging over the road a bit, because I didn't want to head down that, uh, down that bank over there. That would have been a tad difficult to get us back out of there. Stephen and Carol's camper van getaways. That fits on there perfectly. And then another one or two pitches here. But you can see the steam coming off the woods over there as the uh, temperature starts to rise a bit. And all that rain, and boy was it been raining while we drove down um, from Calais. It was horrific. But uh, we're hoping that as we mooch south, things will improve, because after all it is only the second week in September, so it should be still fairly good. Certainly hoping that um, Lake Garda and, uh, and Venice, I'm, uh, hope fingers crossed for both of those that there'll be some nice weather. And of course, we've got to go up and over the Alps. Um, because we're staying on Lake Plan Seat for a couple of nights um, in about three or four days' time, so uh, definitely stay tuned for those films um, when they come out. Uh, Lake Garda, Venice, particularly. In fact, for the whole tour, it'd be lovely to have you guys along. And a massive thank you, of course, to all those who have who have joined our new channel. Started on the 30th of August, moving some films over from a from an older channel that we um, used to share with our boating fun that we had in 2020 and 2021. But uh, the time was right to uh, separate the two bits of fun. So check out Power Boating Adventures as well. We do uh, still do some stuff with boats, as you know, power boats. But of course, this is all things motorhome. Nice little play area. But yeah, little hutch, little Little single room places there. And that looks, uh, that definitely looks colourful. That will probably not get some use tomorrow. I'm sure we'll have to leave far too early for me to be able to exercise in the morning. Far too early. Oh, some little shepherd's hut style things there as well. And because it's been raining on us all day, we had to get out and get a bit of fresh air. So we're starting with a wander around the site. But as you can see, most of them look sort of well established and uh, fairly permanent in nature. Wow, look at that. 
at that. It's like a showman's caravan. What a cracker. Loving the pink. And there's a good view. Uh, we are down there at the bottom end, but uh, definitely quaint and rustic. And Le Pommier Rustique probably is a very good description. I think it was about 15 quid a night, so um, can't go wrong really. Last night we were in, obviously, um, when we were at uh, Blackhall's farm, three beers at the pub was 14 quid, so you can't go wrong really, 15 quid. Yeah, there we go. There's the roof of Resi down there. That's us for the night. And then uh, through Luxembourg tomorrow and down into a night, what single night at Germany before we start some two nighters um, down through Austria, Lake Garda and Venice, which are all two nighters. And our uh, site is just on the left here up there, but this reminds me very much of um, like a North Oxfordshire village or something. And yet we're in, um, in Belgium. Very sleepy little place. Lovely stone buildings. But as yet, I think we've seen one person and one car come through. Very sleepy, and what's the time? It's, uh, it's 10 to five. Wow, look at that. Now that's smart. Wow. The cubic farm. Beautiful. Wow. Modern behind that old facade. Some sort of rental holiday accommodation. Beautiful. That's very nice. Look at that. Very nice too. Get your own barn as well. God, what a man cave that would be. I need a man cave that big, I think. Wow. A massive church for a relatively small place. And very modern there with the older and the old. Memorial there to the um, children of Durnal. Yes, I did it in injustice. I called it spontaneously, but it's not, it's Durnal. As you can see there by the inscription at the bottom, the children of Durnal. And those that lost their lives in one of the wars, one of those crazy wars. Not much need for a zebra crossing. So I think we're up to about four cars since we came out. And in with the old, quite a few new builds as well. Built in the old style, if you like. In fact, we just met a lady walking her dogs, said good evening in French and she turns out to be English, lived here for 20 years, having moved from Henley in Oxfordshire. What a small world. Wow, that's a pretty little, pretty little, some sort of area of remembrance. So, that was a look at Camping Durnal, Le Pommier Rustique, Seems to be, look, there's almost, it's almost a shade of blue up there. Although I might be just imagining that. So we're, um, we are off in the morning and we're heading into Germany. Got nothing booked in Germany. So we're hoping we might find 
um, near a little town, south of a town called Landau, is um, a couple of wineries, farm stops, which I saw on Park for Night or Pitch Up, one or the other. Um, so I'm hoping to try and get into one of those. Um, and you never know, it would be rude not to taste some if we did, wouldn't it? So I don't think we came across any roadworks, did we, on our trip? That was really good. Tiny bit in Belgium, didn't we? Or in the first bit of Belgium, because obviously yeah. we're still at uh, the Camping Dernal, where um, we're finishing off uh, packing up, and then we're heading off into Germany way. So another couple of hundred miles, 230 odd miles, aren't we? Yeah. What do you think of that, though? What do you think of this place? Well, I have to say it is very rustic at Denal. Um, a bit rustic, yes. Yes. The, uh, yeah, not the most clean, really. Oh, no, right. No. Yeah. No. Yes. You Shame. Know, spit I mean, and sawdust. Spit and sawdust. But the, the views are, I mean, on the plus side, the views are lovely mm. here. Um, it is nice. It's set in some lovely countryside and um, the motorhome pitches um, overlook a lovely valley. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you're wanting, you know. Spick and span. Nice showers, clean showers, then mm, perhaps it doesn't meet everyone's needs, but um, it's fine for one night. It's exactly. fine for one night. Yeah. Exactly. For a stopover on the way south, absolutely fine indeed. So, hope you've enjoyed that trundle through um, all the way from sunny England through the tunnel into Belgium. And um, do catch us on the next film as we head down south, looking forward to Austria, to Lake Garda, you name it very nice too so yes. see you in the next time guys and thanks ever so much for watching thanks now bye bye now. bye, bye.